This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA, it's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Right now, thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. And we are just finishing up a spectacular fight. Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor. And this is our special post-fight show. As usual, I'm your host, Tate. And I have my two special guests. I got William. What's up, everybody? He's always with me uh, with the MMA show. And then I also have... Hello. (laughs) You are going to raise that voice a little bit there. (laughs) Because that was pathetic. Okay, I'll try that again. Hello. After after what we just experienced with the McGregor Mayweather fight, and all you can come up with is a little squeaky little... A squeaky little hello. It was just... I'm, I'm so excited I had nothing left. Okay, so we just finished the fight. Floyd Mayweather just knocked out Conor McGregor in the 10th round. What did you guys think? I was thoroughly entertained. Uh, I thought it was very entertaining for those first couple rounds. And uh, Mayweather started really showing his hand and really getting into the groove of the things and really doing the things that he said he was going to do in the pre-fight. And he eventually ended up doing what he said he was going to do. What about you, Sarah? I thought it was good. I mean, I was glad that it, I was, I was glad that that it went well for everyone. Frankly, I mean, I think, you know, I expected Mayweather to win, but I'm glad that Connor did well. I agree. This was a fight where everybody, I felt like everybody won, and the reason why that is is McGregor didn't. You know, a lot of people thought McGregor was going to make a fool of himself. Gr- McGregor held his own. I mean, and on my scorecard. I had him winning, literally, I I gave him the first four rounds, which was, just blew me away. Uh, but from the fourth round on, uh, I gave every round after that to McGregor, and on the official scorecard, I mean to, to Mayweather, but on the official scorecards from the third round on, the judges all gave the rounds to, uh, to Mayweather. Uh, so give me your take, I'm gonna start with Will, on what you were surprised about, uh, if there was anything you were surprised about. I necessarily wasn't surprised. I mean, uh, Mayweather in his pre-interviews before this fight has been saying that he was going to give the fans what he want and just count on it not going the distance. He was going to finish the fight. And uh, you were alluding to it earlier. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to make an impact and for the first 49 fights of his career, uh, after after everything settled, after the Pacquiao fight, Floyd didn't really feel like he gave it to the fans. Everyone was complaining that he's a boring fighter, that he doesn't really give it his all, and he kind of runs around. Well, well he, he gave it today. Yeah, he sat in front of him. He stood in front of him. He put his fists up, not in the Philly shell that he normally does. He put his head in between those, and he walked forward, just like he said he was going to do. And he gave the fans a very compelling fight for the first four rounds. And even after that, he allowed uh, Connor to showcase his skills. And it felt like he was kind of being Oprah in that fight. He's like, you win a car. Hey, you win a car. You win this. You can do this. You all win a car. You, everybody wins. The fans, I'm sure, at the bars, at, uh, out in their homes, they were really compelled. They were really thinking that uh, Connor had a chance. Yeah, every, every, every there was a point in time where... In- I was like, holy crap, he's going to win a decision. Were you thinking, Sarah, that there was a shot that he could actually win this fight? 
talking about Conor McGregor. I know what you're talking about. Um, no. I mean, in the first, I, I had him the same as you, first four rounds to McGregor. I didn't think, I, I didn't really think that he was going to win. I just figured that Mayweather was kind of feeling him out in those first few rounds, figuring it, figuring out what his style was. Um, but I, it didn't ever feel like Mayweather was gonna just sit back and let him let McGregor win. I was the thing I was thinking about. I'm like, there's a point where McGregor on my card had won five rounds, and I'm like, Floyd has never. I mean, Floyd hasn't knocked out anybody since like Lincoln was president, <laughs> and I'm like. If this goes the distance, McGregor could actually pull this out. And I, I was really starting to think that that Floyd might have had a flawed game plan. But the one thing, like if you watch the Diaz fight, McGregor versus uh, Diaz, this was a carbon copy of that fight. Are you talking about one or two? Number two. Yes. In num- number one. Number is, one is uh, number one is I'm choking. I can't breathe. Oh no, the fight's over. <laughs> but number two, it was McGregor started out the first two rounds on fire, and then his tank ran out, and then he was kind of toast, and then he got a second win. But in this fight, once his tank ran out, Mayweather never let him get his uh, get a second win, and Mayweather really was tagging him with clean shots. By the time they stopped it, there was always some, almost like a minute and a half that that McGregor did not just was taking shots before the referee stopped it. And my question to you guys is, does any of you guys think the fight was stopped early? Because I totally do not. Miss Sarah? <laughs> um, no, I don't think it was stopped early. And I don't think... Um, I don't think McGregor thought it was stopped early either. I mean, he's not shy about stating well, those things. But you you, you said it. You said he wasn't taking, sh- you know, he was just taking shots for at least a minute, may probably longer. So um, when Mayweather was really kind of pounding him there at the end, I don't think it was stopped early. When- now, do you, th- and I understand why the referee stopped the fight as early as he did. It's more of a safety issue. McGregor has a bright future ahead of him. Uh, he was taking a lot of shots and I thought the referee made the right decision to stop it. Did you have any problems, Will? Listen, I had no problems. We come from, uh, watching a lot of MMA and in MMA, the ref will stop it whether you're not, uh, defending yourself intelligently. And there's a lot more leeway because you can be knocked down. You can uh, be submitted, so they let it go on the ground a lot more. And that's what McGregor was kind of expecting. And obviously, you're not going to get that in a boxing match. I've been watching boxing my entire life. People, when they start getting wobbly legs, when they start stumbling against the ropes, the ref is going to stop it. Yeah, because if you don't, that's how brain damage happens in boxing so often is because the gloves are padded, it takes a, a lot more punishment can be dished out. And McGregor has way too bright of a future, especially after this. He has way too bright of a future to be taking the punishment, you know, because that la- the round before, the ninth round, he took some serious shots. And then uh, the tenth round, it was a wrap. Um, were you surprised? Any Were you, any of you surprised at how uh, Floyd was sitting down on his punches and he was going for broke? He, he was determined that he was going to get a knockout. Uh, was that a surprise for any of you? Uh, what about you, Will? I wasn't really surprised. I was saying throughout the fight, I can see when, when you watch a fight, you can see different levels of speed, different levels of technique. Yes, and, you can. And you, I, I, I always got the sense, and especially in the first four rounds, uh, that McGre- Mayweather was not threatened by anything that Connor could uh, dish out to him. He was smiling behind his guard. He was walking forward. He was letting... He was letting him hit shots. He threw four punches in the first round. I I, I know. I, like- I was like, "What is he doing?" I I I was pulling my hair out at that point because I'm like, <laughs> "He got to pick up the pace here. You you can't throw ten punches in two rounds and keep on doing that and uh, keep your title." He he is a shark in the water in that ring. He he knows when he can finish a fight. He knows what his capabilities are, and he knew fair. He knew very well that he could finish the fight, and that's what he counted on. And it, he was right. 
<laughs> now, Sarah, yes. was there any point that you were, that you thought McGregor could actually, you know, hurt Floyd? I know he hurt him with a, it looked like it was, Floyd said it was a kind of a low blow. It was a body shot that looked like it hurt him. Um, he hit, he hit Floyd with an uppercut. Uh, but was there any point in time that you thought Floyd was ever in really any danger? In any serious danger? Not particularly. I mean, Connor got in some really good shots. There were a few that um, seemed to rock Mayweather a little bit. But he, you could definitely tell the difference in experience in the way that they throw their punches. You know, even from me, not knowing as much about boxing as the two of you, I could tell that there was a definite, definite skill difference in how they threw their punches. So I wasn't, I wasn't too worried about um, Mayweather, but I was impressed that McGregor got in as many and as good of shots as he did. Now, Sarah brought up a great point. One of the things that I noticed is McGregor's punches, he threw a lot of like arm punches with not much power. I, I never seen McGregor throw punches like that. They they didn't have a lot of zip behind him. Why was that, Will? I think he was pacing himself, and he really was trying to really open up angles. If you watch throughout the fight, he did a pawing hand that tried to strip the glove away and, and open a guard in Floyd's defense. It's very similar to the uh, offense of Vasily uh, Lomachenko. He, he, he kind of pulls the gloves out of his face and opens it up for the right hand. So uh, I saw that a lot. And uh, I think he was really just trying to conserve it because he, I feel like th he even mentioned it in his post interview. He said that Mayweather is really composed and he was watching, he was basically reacting to Mayweather the entire fight because he was, he was, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was kind of surprised by what was going on as well. You know, one of the things that, you know, when McGregor talks about how composed uh, Mayweather is, um, McGregor survives because I don't know if I want to use the word survive, but he wins a lot of his fights before he ever steps in the ring. And it was very obvious that McGregor's antics had no bearing on Floyd. You know, even when Floyd was losing the rounds, he was smiling at him and laughing at him and having a good time. Um, you know, and I think that had a factor on McGregor as well. Do you agree or disagree? McGre Mayweather is as professional as it comes, as experienced as it comes. He knows and he's seen pretty much everything that's going to come his way, especially what we saw tonight. Uh, he wasn't even phased by those little rabbit punches and those hammer fists that Connor was throwing. And I, that was just that's just what I expect from Mayweather at this point. You know what? I'm going to say this about the hammer fists. I personally thought that the referee should have taken a point from McGregor for all the rabbit punches, which are the shots behind the head and the hammer fist, but he never did. Uh, Sarah, do you think he should have taken the referee should have taken a po uh, point? Do you did you what did you think about the referee as a whole? Really, this is the question you're giving me. <laughs> uh, um, I was surprised, I guess, that he didn't take a point. I mean, he he kept he kept sort of lecturing Connor about it, but he gave he, you a lot of warnings, he but all, he never did anything. But he also lectured Floyd almost equally as much about, you know, turning. So it's almost like he, I don't know. He just, he seemed a little maybe hesitant. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of felt that way. Like, you know, he, he didn't want to take a point. He was, he was definitely, I thought he was making a really strong effort to not take a point. What, do you have uh, any comments, Will, on that one? Well, I got two things to say. I think um, the referee realized that uh, those hammer fists and those rabbit punches weren't making too much of an impact and they weren't as significant. Uh, and the second thing, which is a major part of it, is this is not only their biggest fight of the career, but, but the referee's biggest fight. And his goal is to basically be invisible, to basically uh, right. protect, the re protect the fighter's safety and uh, to just have a fair and safe fight, if you want to say safe, uh, not the right, best word, but he doesn't want to be a part of this huge, huge event. He wants to do his job, and he didn't want to rock any boats. He didn't want to create any controversy, and that's why I think he was very uh, conservative in his point deductions and, 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 and any uh, penalties that he dished out. 
I agree with that as well. Now, um, one of the things I'm going to bring up is actually we'll take we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to I'll bring up another point is. Uh, but just in case anyone uh, actually bet on this fight and actually took advantage of our special promotion uh, through my bookie dot uh, ag in which they're giving a special promotion in which for every dollar you put in, they match that dollar. So you put in fifty dollars, you get a you get a hundred dollars. You put in a thousand, you get a thousand. Um and you had to use our promo code GSMC Sports uh to get that promotion. If you bet on uh the, the Mayweather fight and you had Mayweather, you're getting paid out pretty fast. Uh, so, uh, congratulations on anybody that won. And like I said, we're about to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to cover a little bit more about what happened in this fight. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC football podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. of the you know maybe the greatest pay-per-view event event in history it seems like from everything we're hearing uh there was a lot of people buying this fight um my first question is with this fight is it gonna pass the pacquiao fight uh from from all the 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 hearsay and from all the the talk leading up to this and just all the people, all the casual people that I've been running into that just talk about this fight in general, it is, it's definitely leading up to, uh, surpassing that fight, uh, the, the Pacquiao fight. And I just, it, I, 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 it, it was a legendary buildup and a legendary fight in itself. And I agree. One of the things I'll say is, you know, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna blow the pay per view record out the water. Even when you know, I it's bizarre. It's kind of like this. This fight was kind of like making the making the NBA or something, because I heard from people I haven't talked to in years. As a matter of fact, I had a guy call that I haven't talked to in years. We never really even got along, and he's calling me up to see if he can come over and watch the fight. And I'm like, I'm kind of busy. You know, <laughs> when someone that doesn't even like you decide to call you up to bury the hatchet to be friends with you so you can watch this fight, this fight's going to break some records. I don't know if you guys agree Tate, with that. Tate, didn't your parents buy the fight? Do they ever pay for pay-per-view? My dad has never bought a pay-per-view event. He's never even bought a, like, a movie on demand, <laughs> let alone... I'm, I'm going to take this back. He's never even gone and rented a video at Redbox or Blockbuster or anything like that. He rented this. He, he, he purchased this fight. That's I, impressive. That is, and guys, if you, I mean, if you've ever met my parents, you would understand how impressive that is. That's kind of like the, like Amish <laughs> going out and buying this fight as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there, we, there was actually, um, the fight actually started at 9 p.m., uh, Pacific time, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time, because pay-per-view issues. Uh, they were having issues with, uh, I mean, we, we experienced it a little bit here. There was like a little static, and it kind of broke off and turned into a black screen. And that was happening across 
the United States and probably across the world. And that was why uh, that has to be why there was like uh, issues with um, because of just the amount of people that were watching the just, fight. Just a number of people, because a lot of people were having they were worried about spectrum issues as far as being able to handle this. Now, with that being said, this fight was ninety nine dollars. Give me your take on the entire event. I, and I'm going to let each of you give me your just the overall and I mean, when I say the entire event, I mean from the Las Vegas press conference to the very end of this fight. Did it deliver? Was it worth your your hundred dollars to watch? Uh, so give me your take, and then I'm gonna give you mine. Sarah, you want to go first? Sure. Um, yes, I think it was probably worth the pay per view. I think the McGregor Mayweather fight was worth it in itself. The rest of the card. I don't know if it's because I am sort of newish to the whole boxing scene. I haven't watched as much as you guys have. Um, Not everyone wears fuzzy slippers well, and fuzzy, the fuzzy uh, shorts. I don't yes. know if those were worth the price of admission. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, speaking of fuzzy, fuzzy shorts, there was there was fuzzy pom poms. There was a fuzzy hat. It was a whole fuzz thing. He kind of looked like Elmo. A little bit. <laughs> like a blue Elmo. Elmo's red. <laughs> I said yeah. a blue Elmo. I know. <laughs> okay. But as a whole, were you pleased? Was it was it worth your money? Do you think anyone's going to be upset that they paid $99 for this fight? I don't think so. I would be upset if I paid $99 for the undercard. The main event was fine. Absolutely. William? Listen, this was a cultural event. I mean, you have people that would never watch a fight before... Uh, Unless it was of this magnitude, these are people that wa- came in and watched the Pacquiao fight, and they even tracked more people than that fight, from what I can tell from just my general everyday walking around and talking to people. And those press conferences, legendary. Uh, the build up to this fight, legendary. You have two of the most outspoken, uh, braggadocious, and just awe inspiring fighters in, in terms of what they do in and out of the ring. And they finally clashed in, at a time that everyone wanted to them to clash. That was my main issue with the Pacquiao fight. It didn't happen in the time that it should have happened. And and the fight itself was extremely entertaining. I mean, I, if, I'm i sure the bars were lit up. Everyone was just happy and cheering. The bars are lit up right now. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> Las Vegas is, has turned to Ireland in some sort of way. And all in all, I I, I loved it. Okay, my the question was, did this event, was it worth the money? And my answer is, absolutely. It was worth every single penny. This fight, when Floyd said he wanted to make up for the Pacquiao fight, I say this event covered the, this fight and the Pacquiao fight. I thought this was really entertaining. If you this was this is that fight that everybody got what they wanted. If you were a McGregor fan, you had hope. You when you went through the first five rounds, you're like, he's gonna get him. He's gonna get him. Uh, if you're a Floyd Floyd fan, you're like, he's just setting him up. He's setting him up. And then when he started landing those clean shots, and McGregor was getting tired, everybody got a little something for everybody. Um, it was amazing. I thought. I thought. You know, it was. It was really worth the the money that was paid, which was ninety nine in the U.S. and in Europe it was about thirty dollars, <laughs> which Europe definitely got a discount on this. So. Well, they need the discount with everything that's going on, <laughs> but we won't talk about that. Yes. So, ooh, it went a little political on us over here. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, for the price of a plane ticket, you could have saved. No, see, it doesn't work either. Yes, but you know what? And if you're, if I was a person. Came coming over from Ireland, would I be upset? I'd be disappointed that McGregor lost, but you were really trying to find a unicorn here by no one really, I don't think anyone really thought that McGregor was going to win. And if you did, you were hoping for kind of like that flash one shot to not the shocker. But even if you didn't get what you wanted, which was that shocking McGregor win, you should have. Everybody walks out of there happy. This isn't. This isn't Ricky Hatton Mayweather, uh, where Ricky Hatton really never show put up an an offensive battle. Uh, 
McGregor really put up an offensive battle. Question for you, and this is more for Will because you don't, you don't, Sarah doesn't, hasn't watched as much boxing. True story. I thought McGregor did better than Pacquiao. I thought he did better than every, I mean, like half of Floyd's fights didn't do as well as McGregor did. No, I was saying in 90% of his fights, yes. nobody does that well. I'm thinking, let's say, I don't even think Floyd Mayweather did that as well. Um, I was shocked at how well he handled himself really well in that ring. Um, well, now I can say, because I did watch the Pacquiao fight, that um, McGregor landed more shots. Oh, he, I think he landed more shots than anyone that I can remember. Chop Chop Curly, maybe. I don't remember anyone hitting Floyd that many times. Not even Zab Judah. No. Not even Zab. Not even Zab. No, I agree. Not Dale. I don't. And you know, I don't think De La Hoya did. Uh, I you not know. even Castillo in his in his fight that people think that he lost. Uh, not even Castillo landed as many punches. No. Yeah. And I I thought with the Castillo fight, I thought never did he won. The best case scenario would have been, in my opinion, was a draw at best. But I had Mayweather winning that. But it it was just uh, just shocking, and uh, so that made it worth it. There now, my my next question for each of you guys, and I'll let Sarah go first on this one, is what's next? What do you envision next for these two fighters? I feel like um, Mayweather is going to actually retire this time. <laughs> you know, he said he was retiring. And you think he's going to stay retired? Or do you think if they offered up another $400 million for well, a rematch that he'll fight again? Oh, for a rematch? I don't know if I see a rematch happening. I don't either. Um, and if they offered up another $400 million, it would definitely have to be the right circumstances, I think. And as for McGregor, he seemed, you know, you can't really – you can't really say for sure with what he said after the fight um, in that moment, but he seemed he seemed content that he had done this and um, had a good experience. I feel like he's going to go back to MMA. I agree. I don't think uh, I, I I truly believe you can tell after the fight when Floyd was starting to get a little emotional. He was trying to hold it together. That Floyd, I don't I don't think if you offered another four hundred million. He would take it. I don't think. I think he's truly done. What about you, William? This is one of those rare moments in sports where uh, a champion is able to ride off into the sunset and be completely happy with their Absolutely. career. Absolutely, he's fifty and zero. He has more money than he knows. No, no, I'm, never mind. I'm not going to say that. He <laughs> he knows a lot of ways to spend his money, uh, uh, and I I think that he has a lot of ventures that he wants to uh, go out uh, and pursue outside of boxing i think he has closed this chapter of his life and as for connor i think that he misses mma he even said how he misses that they they could hit the ground right after or how he can uh yeah, use yeah, his submissions his kicks every every arsenal yes. in his mma tool book mcgregor and, wanted to go out on the shield yeah you know that's the thing that he really wanted now, but keep hey, on going i'm gonna go turn ahead. and ask you a question yeah, go yeah. go go right ahead <laughs> If McGregor, when McGregor goes back to MMA, what do you think his next fight should be? Should it be the, should he have a third fight with Diaz? Should he go to Russia and fight Khabib? What do you think he should do? All right. First off, I'm going to talk about what he should not do. <laughs> and forgive me for saying this, but stay the hell away from Khabib. <laughs> stay, don't even eat kebabs. Stay away <laughs> from Khabib. Now, my next thing is, the biggest money fight for Floyd Mayweather, it's not Khabib. Floyd Mayweather? I mean, for Conor McGregor is. It's not It's not Khabib. Going to Russia and fighting Khabib is a dangerous situation. Um, and it's not going it's, it's, it's to bring any extra eyes to, or butts to the seat. Uh, if it's Ferguson, it's not that big. If it's Lee, it's not that big. But... It's time for that third fight with Diaz. That's the next big money fight that you could put together, especially off of, off of this event, or either or if he went for Tyrone Woodley uh, and tried to go up another another weight class. 
I but I personally I would like to see him go after Diaz. It's a fight that he could win. He's a much better boxer just from this fight. And so I think it's a fight that he could win, make a lot of money, and get back in the MMA. Uh what do you think, Will? No, oh, I like I like that Diaz three fight. I think that it's really good, um uh, not not to be disrespectful to Nate Diaz, but kind of a tune up to get back into MMA. I agree with you. He's going to they're going to primarily stay stand up. They're going to box generally. Um and he's he, it's a, it's a safer option for him to get back into everything, get his training back in order, get his jiu-jitsu, get his wrestling up to par. And then after that, I think Khabib is a great fight for him. It's it, Connor has never shied away from a challenge in his life, in his career or anything in his Anything. He fought Floyd Mayweather in boxing. So I think that ultimately his desire to be competitive, his desire to be the alpha and to be the champion of the world, it's going to lead him to uh, fighting Khabib in Russia or Oh, he's going he's to get to Khabib. I, I, I'm just saying I would go Diaz, let, uh, do the, let them do that interim title match with uh, Lee and Ferguson, fight the winner of that, then go after Khabib. How can you go from Mayweather... To fighting uh, uh, Lee or Ferguson, that that that's doesn't hard, that I don't it? want to do that. That's not going to make me that much money. That's not going to make you have no choice though. Here's the reason why you have absolutely positively no choice because the UFC made that a interim title match, and you can't have both. You can't have the interim champion and the existing champion existing at the exact same time. When and what are you going to do? Just say we're going to skip over that fight. They're going to have to do it. They have no choice now. Well, they do have a choice if the timeline matches up. There is a certain someone coming back to the UFC in November, and that is GSP. <laughs> GSP wins Ooh. that title. He could potentially Ooh. fight for the 170 title, or he can fight the biggest fight out there in MMA right now, and that would be against May McGregor. Okay, I just went a little fangirl over here. I'm not even going to lie to you because I totally forgot about GSP. You are right. If you don't do DS, because there, McGregor has enough time because of the fact that Ferguson and Lee are fighting and there needs to be a little more time. So McGregor could come back and have one fight before he has to have that interim unification fight. And if it's not Diaz, then McGregor, uh, Floyd, I mean, McGregor, uh, GSP, GSP. Both of either one of those fights would be huge money, and those are the only two fights that you could have that can pay McGregor the money that he's going to demand. Because how do you go from making a hundred, hundred and fifty million dollars and just say, "Hey, we're going to give you ten on this next fight"? No, I don't <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> now you can give me ten, and I'll fight the entire roster of UFC for ten million. Now, do you think that's going to be the thing that that maybe? I mean, I think he wants to go back to MMA, but do you think that's the thing that's going to be the hardest for him is that he's now made this kind of money and going back to MMA is not going to give him that kind of money? When I was a little kid, I took a job at, uh, at, a, at a burger burger place, which we remain, uh, that we're not going to talk about. And I was getting paid minimum wage and I was really happy about it until I was no longer making minimum wage. And you look at making minimum wages now and it's like, oh, I'm never going back there. Same with McGregor. He was happy making five, ten million dollars a fight. But after after you know, you've seen you've seen, you know, Paris. You can't go to Arkansas. You just can't go back to Arkansas. I mean it's 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 gonna be hard for him to say you just ticked off the entire state of Arkansas. Nicely done there, Tate. Arkansas is a cool place. I've, I've been to Arkansas, <laughs> but Arkansas is not Paris. And I'm sorry, everybody in Arkansas, if you've been to Paris and you compared it to, you're going to pack up and move. I'm just saying. <laughs> but it's hard to go back. Uh, you have the lifestyle of a hundred and hundred, you know, with the money that he's made, let's say, let's say, give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say he made 40 million in his lifetime at the UFC. Now he grew up poor. So, in his entire MMA career, he's made 40. Let's say he makes 150 here. That puts him at about 200 million in the bank. All the blood, sweat, and tears you have to go through to be an MMA fighter. Do you really want to take the damage and 
you know, he has a little kid on the way. I say McGregor. The little kid's here. He's here. I mean, he's four yeah, months sorry, here. Sorry about that. That's right. Um, but he has a little. He has. He has a little young in now. Is he really going to be willing to? That's why I. I like what you said. I think it's either Diaz or GSP, and I think he's done after that. I can see Khabib. I can see the he UFC. Does kind of want that Khabib fight in Russia. Though, Listen, right? Russia is a relatively untapped market. It there is. are it so is. many Russians that want to watch the UFC. There are they are clamming for it. That's why it's even in the discussion. Um, and and, and the that's UFC a huge. Wants to get to Russia bad. They will pay Connor to go to Russia to fight Khabib. <laughs> hey, Tate, you ready yeah. to put me in the corner? Yes, let's hear it. It'd be another fuzzy hat. But those oh, would be yes. cool fuzzy I hats. love that. I, I love his hat. I can't lie. I want that Khabib hat. I don't know where I would wear it. I'd find an excuse to put on the Khabib. I, I'd, I'm from Ohio. I'd just go home in the winter like time. It's 110 here today. Why on earth would you want I'm sorry. I would go home every winter just so I could wear the Khabib hat if I had one. I would pay money to see you wear that hat. I might actually get that hat for you because it would look beautiful on you. I think you could rock it. Uh, it just, it just, it's very symmetrical on you. Listen, I'm all about it. You bring it. I rock it. <laughs> all right. We'll see. We'll, you we'll can see. take a picture. I'll post it on social media. Go right ahead. I'm going to sport that Khabib hat. First chance I get. I'm searching Amazon right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap this uh, episode up? I'm just happy for combat sports. I am just so happy. Boxing benefited. MMA benefited. Combat sports made out like a bandit, right? It was amazing. It was amazing. (laughs) You know, and it's kind of like Santa Claus came, made everybody happy in combat sports. And guess what? Hey, we're going to give you... Uh, Canelo Triple G next. So it's just kind of like everybody wins. MMA, you get Connor back. You, you get you, Connor you, back because uh, you, you you agree Connor's not staying in boxing anymore. The, the whole concept of him and Polynology, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, it is difficult. Um, you haven't heard me say Khabib's last name. <laughs> 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 I, I can still say Joanna Joe Jacek though. Um, well then, thank you very much. Been practicing, <laughs> but Floyd. I mean, uh, I keep saying Floyd, but McGregor realizes that stamina is an issue. He wants nothing to do with boxing ever again. And seriously, and, and matter of fact, after seeing this fight, I don't think he should touch boxing ever again. The stamina, MMA stamina for him is an issue. Everyone thinks that the key to getting McGregor is to get him down and ground and pound him. I say the key to McGregor beating McGregor in the UFC is to take him in deep water. When he gets when he gets tired, he gets tired. Tate, that's such a tall task to ask anybody in MMA because <laughs> that man has that man has power in that left hand and he has the, all those angles which he showcased tonight. He he but- really has what it like he has discon- distance control we saw that play out in a boxing ring he he has that uh more so than anybody I in agree MMA with you. the fact of the matter is the greatest one of the greatest minds in in boxing history one of the greatest defensive fighters in boxing history openly admitted he had a tough time with his style and how he moved and hit angles that's amazing. Um, so that I mean that's that's interesting in his own fact. Um, so taking him to I, mean, I think you have to drain this tank. You have to figure out a way to drain this tank if you're an MMA fighter. But uh, I mean we don't we that's a story we can talk about at a later date. Uh, man, it was just an it was just an impressive event. Uh, Floyd also one of the other things I'm going to say is Floyd has been a very hated fighter for a very long time. This whole event, if you, you know, the, all the behind the scenes stuff, do you agree? It showed a different side of Floyd that I think a lot of people, uh, hadn't seen before Sarah. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, we saw, you know, we saw him roller skating with his kids in some of the... A the good packages. father, yes. We saw him with his grandmother you know, and talking about how how much of an influence she had been on his growing up and how he wanted to take care of her. We saw him with the the young man with um, who's battling leukemia and just how sweet and wonderful he was with that child. And I know that that's just uh, one example of many young people that he has helped as they have been going through medical issues like that. I know he's helped them financially. I know he's, you know, done things like he did with this young man with bringing him to the gym. So he doesn't like to showcase that. And I think that's another reason that we can say he's probably definitely retired this time because he did open up that part of his life. He definitely opened up a lot. Now, what about you, Will? Listen, I followed Floyd's career ever since the pretty boy Floyd days when he beat Diego Corrales and just really made a name for himself. And I watched his evolution to becoming Money Mayweather. And I watched him realize after being underpaid by uh, the Bob Arums, by Top Rank, Mm -hmm. by the HBOs of the world, I realized he, uh, I, I watched him realize himself as a martial artist and as a businessman and as a person. I've Wait, did you say martial artist? He is a martial artist. A boxing martial artist. Okay. Uh, okay. Mar- boxing is a martial art. Not a mixed martial art. It is, I didn't say mixed martial art. I said martial art. Technically, you're right. You know, you know, I don't never think of it as a martial art, though, but I understand where you're coming from now as you clarify it. Be- beautiful martial artist. And uh, I... What I've, was that word you just said? Beautiful martial artist. Okay. I just... I, you get all oh, jump. I was like, what the heck was that? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and... and, and uh, you guys may have not seen it because you didn't. You may not have followed his career as closely as I have. I, I've watched all these All Access specials, which he's he, I, he basically created uh, no, with Showtime. I agree with you. He he created that twenty four seven. I followed his career from the beginning as well. So yeah, I've seen so him cool. take. He I've seen him rent out trucks full of food that he can give to homeless people all around Las Vegas. I've seen him give so much back to his his greater community uh, back in Michigan, in, uh, in Las Vegas, the money team, and the girl collection. I've seen it all. And I, I, I'm people are going to take what they take from what he's done. He knows that. He's accepted um, his perception in the world. And this fight and what he continues to do in his community is basically him just working towards... Getting that love that everyone wants. I mean, that's that's what he loves at the end of the day. All right. And with that, that's the perfect segment to end this end this uh, fight. Does anyone have a final take before I uh, go? Sarah, do you have anything else? How can you top the ending with love? You know, we'll, we'll wrap the whole thing up, not with blood and guts, but with love. And with that... You're listening. You were listening to the Golden State Media Concept MMA podcast, brought to you by MyBookie.ag, and we are out. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program